Tipping Point by Malcolm Gladwell. Welcome to my channel. My name is Samuel and I want to make self-growth normal. If you want to make self-growth normal, because I don't want to do it alone and come on guys, who doesn't want to make self-growth normal? Then make sure to smash that like button. In the beginning of this book, the author, as most book reviewers on YouTube probably do for their summary of this book, talks about the very popular story of hush puppies. A shoe, or well, shoes that hipster kids wore in New York and the sales were dying until they wore them and they skyrocketed a ton and all of a sudden hush puppies were back to the absolute top of the market. And I looked them up because like a lot of things in this book, for some reason I hadn't really heard of them and I mean, I can't see myself wearing them. But how did that happen? Further I got into the book, I actually found the stories that Gladwell was telling to be more entertaining. I think the hush puppy story is a little overrated compared to the other ones kind of like cursing in book titles. The tipping point is the biography of an idea. And the idea is that the best way to understand the emergence of fashion trends, the ebb and flow of crime waves, or the transformation of unknown books to bestsellers, or the rise of vaping, for a more nowadays example. All of these are basically epidemics, clear examples of contagious behaviors. Malcolm Gladwell, kind of like Robert Greene, notorious author of the notorious book, Notorious B.I.G. I'm just kidding. The Notorious Book 48 Laws of Power. He's basically a magician. He's a lethal communicator. He knows how to get his points across. He's extremely confident in his perspectives and they're rather contrarian. Gladwell just presents dramatically different points on a different side of everyday life. And that might be a reason why Green's books are typically three to four times longer. Their storytelling compared to each other is a little bit close. I can't say who's better, but they are easily the two best storytellers I've reviewed so far. There's one guy who's probably better than them, but we'll talk about him sometime later this year. The point of this book is to answer two questions that lie at the heart of what we all want to make happen as educators, parents, marketers, business people, and policymakers. Why is it that some behaviors, ideas, and products start epidemics and others don't. And what can we do to start and control positive epidemics ourselves? Is it me or is that kind of exactly what Derek Thompson talked about in the beginning of his book Hitmakers? Because I swear that he asked that in the, those two questions or some form of them in the beginning of the book. Because if it is, the books approach these questions from almost universally different angles. So we're going to talk about those questions in this review. We're going to talk about the three rules of epidemics the law of the few, the stickiness pa factor, and the power of context, and how they offer a way of making sense of epidemics. By epidemics, I don't think he's talking about like swine flu and stuff like that. Although I think that was more of a pandemic. He's talking about like viral explosions of ideas. And we're also going to talk about, you know, what the most helpful negative reviews on Audible had to say. Seven, eight chapters? Chapter one is basically an introduction or some extension of the introduction. Chapter two is about the law of the few and word of mouth marketing. This might be like my first or second favorite chapter. I'm working my way down as bibliography, trying to figure out where it makes the most sense to check this book out or that book out. I think this one is the most marketing focused. And by the way, his background in journalism is probably what he uses to outwit the stunning range of topics he's covered so far as a straight up author. Here are the three types of people. And I think the most extraordinary thing about this book and how it gets these points across is these categories. Because no marketing book I've ever heard of so far talks about the different types of people who spreads ideas, products, and services in such virally explosive ways. If I have, it didn't, it didn't explain it as close to as clearly as this one did. Before I get to these three, I just want to say that books like Contagious by Jonah Berger and Hitmakers by Derek Thompson about spreading ideas, generally speaking, they study and present analyses of lots of different viral explosions, epidemics, whatever you want to call them. Not trying to discredit them, they're really dope books, but in terms of getting the point across, of course, Malcolm Gladwell soars over this. The three types of people are connectors, mavens, which I didn't even know was a word, and salesmen. Connectors. Connectors are the social glue who will spread ideas. A really big specialty of uh, connectors is spreading services and building networks and maintaining them as well. This person typically has a ton of acquaintances, not like 
ridiculously close friends. The author explains why this is, and the author's reasons for stuff like this are so peculiar and unexpected, but like, it's Malcolm Gladwell, what do you expect? The best connector example I can probably think of is Lewis Howes from his The School of Greatness podcast. Mavens. Mavens like to help. They're extremely helpful, they're very unselfish, they love to educate. People who have talked about this have argued that mavens are like probably the strongest of the three as a driver of the economy. Especially, I mean, this would definitely make more sense now because of the whole information age that we have going on. But this is all assuming that the maven has kind of like pre-built context. When there is no context, that's where they're not really experts. The, ma the maven is not a persuader. They don't know by nature how to take people from one side to their own. Which is weird because they educate and inform more than anything else. And with a budding background in sales, I'm convinced that a lot of selling is actually educating and informing. Of course, persuasion as in needs assessment, presentation in some aspects, and closing for sure. Those should probably be understood on like a decently technical level. If we're talking, I mean, if you're not, if you're not a natural, if we're talking about recruiting people onto our product, service, or idea. Salesmen are, well, if you know my channel, you probably know a little bit about salespeople. Chapter 3 is about the stickiness factor, where, as usual, Malcolm Gladwell talks about a lot of different things. One that stood out to me, one that is known as in advertising as the clutter effect. A problem with advertising is when we're watching TV or something, what percentage of the time that we spend watching is advertising, and what percentage is the actual content that we're there for. Before YouTube and Netflix and all these other platforms that have, for the most part, replaced TV, or even during, percentage of time time spent on advertising has increased gradually over the span of the last several decades. I always feel bad when I say negative things, especially on camera, but I think cable is a waste of time, and even if I didn't, I think that this is seriously annoying. Regardless of its reasoning, trying to keep up with inflation, or anything like that. There's a lot of psychology talk in this chapter, like a lot. And particularly in the field of children's learning, chapter four is about the power of context. And when it comes to the power of context, and you combine it with the law of the few, the one we just talked about with the three different types of people who spread ep epidemics, and the stickiness factor, which is like what exactly makes it so sticky that people have to keep their attention glued to it, you will learn that very, very small changes in context can be just as important in tipping epidemics. Even though that fact seems to violate some of our most deeply held assumptions, about human nature. And when you look at it that way, with the stories he tells, like the crime decreases in New York, and the genius methodology, genius, genius methodology, behind why Blue's Clues <laughs> was so sticky to kids, that, and the research he presents behind it, kind of like the Stanford, what is it, the Stanford exper Stanford prison experiment and the New York subway experiment, from some angles, the topic of this book becomes so much deeper than just marketing. With chapter five, the strangest story, most fascinating in the whole book to me, in case I haven't butt-licked Malcolm Gladwell's storytelling skills. By the way, well, I'll put it this way. Malcolm Gladwell's storytelling skills, to butt-lick Malcolm Gladwell's storytelling skills would be to give butt-licking a new meaning. So, <laughs> the strangest, most fascinating story was probably the story of the promotion of Rebecca Wells's Divine Secrets of the Yah Yah Sisterhood. Which, again, like many of these, I hadn't heard of before. <laughs> Call me a late 90s baby. It might not be that one book, apparently there's a whole trilogy, but she basically traveled across the country talking to people about the book. She's also an actress, so she had a skill, and many people to share it with using that skill, aka context, she herself was quite the salesperson, and reading groups eventually just wouldn't shut up about it because of just the type of novel it was. Groups would talk about that book for hours, and all of a sudden, instead of just meeting with each other once a week, they start going on group activities, they start going to the beach and stuff like that. I'll just say after chapter 6 that this man puts a book together, almost as if it's just a bunch of short non-fiction stories that together can prove the exception of a rule, but he does it in ways that are all somehow so different from each other that he basically kind of just ends up chopping the rule down and throwing it into a wood chipper. After listening to chapter 7, I want to point something else out that stands out about Malcolm Gladwell is just this 
diversification of stories. I mean, he'll talk about causes of huge number increases and decreases in smoking and crime rates, but really only after he first talks about some of the most random, unexpected, never heard of before trends, like the ridiculous rise of suicide rates in Micronesia. In fact, usually when he talks about places and populations of them, I feel the need to look them up just to make sure that they're even real. Chapter 8, I think it's chapter 8, is what I like to call an estuary. That's why I call it on this channel when a book has an outro that just kind of brings the book from like a river of information into like a giant ocean of information that kind of explains altogether why we are here, why we do what we do, and at the core of all of that. We are about to enter the age of word of mouth. Paradoxically, all the sophistication and wizardry that limitless access to the information of the new economy is going to lead us to rely more and more on very primitive kinds of social context. Relying on connectors and mavens in our life is the way we deal with the complexity of the modern world. When the most negative helpful reviews say stuff like this, I mean, it's actually pretty rare. <laughs> One person stopped listening as soon as Malcolm Gladwell started listing last names in alphabetical order. A better book to stop listening to at the point of its own name listing would definitely be Freakonomics. Yikes. Another one star review said that he was rambling. Not to be that guy who just sh throws shade at every book because it's really hard for me to even come up with examples off the top of my head. The closest thing I've ever heard to rambling was probably Jordan Peterson in 12 Rules for Life. If this is rambling in the tipping point, then I don't really know where people are coming from with the reviews that say, I wish more people were as stimulating as him. Marketing has a lot to learn from this book with the connectors and the mavens and the salesmen, influencers, also early adopters, which are talked about too. I really only recommend this book because its contents become more true as time flies by. That's something I'm without question willing to bet on. And I gotta come up with a name for books like that too. It's easier to remember and appreciate something if you discuss it for two hours with your best friends. Smoking was never cool. Smokers are cool. Direction one. I recommend this book for anyone who is going into marketing. Simple as that. If you want to know more about marketing, this is a really, really, I wouldn't say that it's a good place to start. I would probably recommend, I guess, Direction 2. If you're not that well versed in marketing, I would recommend checking out The Hitmakers by Derek Thompson and Contagious by Jonah Berger. The Tipping Point by Malcolm Gladwell. There's a link in the description if you guys want to check it out and read the reviews. That and all the other books that I mentioned in this video, if you want to check those out too. If there are any other books that you guys want me to check out and review, please let me know in the comments below and also let me know if you checked out this book and you liked it. But hey, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, because I don't get, I don't even know how long this video is going to be, it, and people watch oh, this far into it, and they don't subscribe, and I'm not sure why that is, but if you have subscribed and you want to turn it up just a notch and turn on that notification bell to receive a notification every time I drop a new video, that would mean the world to me. Thank you guys so much for watching, I really appreciate it. You can find me everywhere and I will see you then.